I spent the last three years of my active army career in Germany as an officer. I had an incredible opportunity to interact with soldiers, civilians, and other members of the community. I went back in the summer of 2014 in order to interview people who were part of the United States military establishment or who interact with it on a daily basis. We're going to look at some of the strategic communications objectives of the U.S. Army in Bavaria. The U.S. Army has existed for well over 230 years. Almost 70 of these have been in post-World War II Germany. This is part of the story of how U.S. forces have become a member of the community far from American soil. We'll hear from public relations practitioners, military officers, journalists, and host nation employees. Each is deeply affected by the German-American partnership in their own way. But why bother forward deploying troops to Germany? Here an explanation from the Joint Multinational Training Command. Our world is complex, and so are its threats. The threats to peace and stability may come in a variety of forms and combinations. Our armed forces must be prepared to meet and defeat them all. Supporting these national security goals and maintaining a trained force keeps the military in Europe today. Army Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Reed is charged with commanding one of the most versatile units in Europe. He and his soldiers have formed a special relationship with the local town of Eschenbach. Um, we started our partnership with them once the garrison aligned our forces uh, with their community. Uh, and the part of that uh, that is unique is we learn from them, but also they learn from us. Yes, we as the Lord Mayors of the surrounding communities have lots of contact, perhaps weekly, but at least two or three times a month we are actually on the base, where we're meeting with our respective commanders of our partner units or with other officials. Contact is frequent. Primarily just so that uh, we can learn from them, we share in their experiences, we share in their fests, we share in their uh, community, but we learn from them and it is also extending their experiences to us. I think we've been exceptionally successful in our engagement and our partnership with uh, the surrounding cities. Uh, again, not just with the mayors, but also with uh, the business owners and everyone else who lives in our towns and villages. While much of the Army's communications are entirely strategic in nature, the German public is able to tune into Armed Forces Network radio shows, which emanate from the installations. Entire generations have grown up listening to U.S. DJs and music since the first broadcasts began. They all have their strategic messages they want to get out. Uh, the importance of our partnership of being in Europe, the strength of our allies, and we use those to integrate into all the stories we do. Take our our audiences, our military audience, we aired to maybe 70,000 soldiers and family members. But if you had our shadow audience, you know, they can they can hear us in Nuremberg, right now in Nuremberg, uh, Amberg, some very big cities and minor cities in Germany. So our shadow audience is in the millions. So back in the day, I listened to AFN in order to learn English and listen to great English language music. You'll hear stories of uh, you know, rock stars who you know, grew up in England or Germany or in France who, who their only introduction to American music was AFN because it just didn't exist. It was like literally you could, I don't know, it was sort of a way you could spy on a culture without actually having to go there. You could just sit back in a far and just watch and listen and see, oh, that's what they do. That's what that means. AFN had natürlich a... Germany-wide, AFN attracted many young listeners, such as myself, who wanted to listen to modern music. The AFN broadcast signals were ever-present, especially on AM, and this led many boys and girls to tune into AFN and listen to this great music. There are countless stories of Germans who've worked for AFN and gone on to uh, work in their own host nation broadcasting. There's a radio station here called Bayern Dry, which is the, the big rock pop station in Bavaria. And it started with a guy who used to be a tech at AFN Nuremberg 
you know, 40 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, without AFN, I wouldn't have been where I am right now. While radio waves reach the Germans freely, the divide between the population and installation is real. What happens inside the gates is sometimes a mystery. An effort to combat this has taken root throughout the region and is known as the German American Volksfest. You know, we always open up the installation to the public uh, during the Volksfest. And that's, yeah, it's a great time, but it's time for them to come in and drink beer and try American food and ice cream and, and things like that. At social events, festing is a big deal here. You know, I grew up in the, the South, and the friendliness of the Germans here it equates to South Georgia for the people that they see that they're just like us. There's not really, we speak a different language, but it's funny, it's, it's, we speak a different language, but if you were to play an American pop song, they all know the words. And this gradual diffusion of American culture, music, and food humanizes soldiers, bringing people together. This direct personal contact works both ways, and the symbiotic impact of the army in Bavaria can't be underestimated. Thousands of Germans are also employed by the military. They bring their own unique perspectives gained over years of employment. It's great working for the army, working as a civilian for the army, and working for the army for over 30 years. I enjoy it every day and looking forward for many more years, working with great people, great soldiers, families, and, you know, meet new friends. I have lots of friends. Whenever I go to the States, uh, I mean, I have not had enough leave time every year to visit all of them. I joined the U.S. Army after graduating from university in 1989 and have been employed ever since by the United States Army as a public affairs officer, first primarily media relations, now the last 11 years community relations. Seit 33 Jahren. Ja, 33 Jahren. About 33 years. Yes, 33 years. I started in the shop and worked my way up to general foreman. So the army is the most reliable employer in this area in the last 50 to 60 years. We are in a rural area of Bavaria. We are the largest employer in our region, offering approximately 3,000 jobs to local nationals here on our two posts. Um, and uh, it is very important for the German public uh, to find out uh, what we are doing. They are also very interested in what we are doing. You get an understanding of almost everything, except for strategic military information. We see what goes on in the families while conducting our maintenance duties in the quarters. The different cultures are on display there, some of which are different than what we are used to in Germany. It is also um, important economically. Um, the jobs are just one aspect. Um, the other aspect is that we are the largest uh, garrison outside uh, the continental uh, United States. Um, our garrison includes uh, Grafenwehr, Wilsack, Hohenfels and Garmisch. And our economic impact on the Bavarian region uh, where our installations are located is 665 million euro per year. Uh, that's an immense amount. This is a they are, of course, people like us, and we do work relatively well together. For some who come over to Germany for the first time, there is some culture shock. But, in general, the cooperation goes very well. German radio, television and print media relay stories in their own ways. The information flows across both official and informal channels. Available to us are, of course, the public affairs officers of the U.S. Army, Mr. Salomon and Ms. Barsch, with whom we have a good relationship. They also help prepare the subjects for the German press. We get themes from them that they would like to see us reporting about, and we get a read on which stories don't serve their purposes. They do, in a way, sometimes function as gatekeepers. We also receive information from German staff and workers. It's rare for us to get news directly from soldiers, as it is harder to get in a conversation with them. Occasionally, we do find things out second and third hand. First, we have to verify and vet the story and ask, is this even true? Should we report about this? Or is it some kind of rumor? 
Und dann gibt's viele andere Wege, also dass uns Fragen And then there are many other ways in which we get messages, such as from freelancers or our own reporters in the field. Sometimes we also obtain newsworthy German police reports or local mayors approach us with story ideas. We are occupied often with these themes, if not daily, then at least once weekly. And for us, it's very important because Americans live amongst our audience and there are many points of contact. But we also work with our public affairs office in general to make sure that our stories are getting into the German press as much as possible as well. I mean, all kind of media, talking from uh, radio, TV, newspapers, and modern technology, the social media, like Facebook and all of that stuff, Internet, of course. And, of course, also talking to people. This Having the Army here is really special for us, and specifically includes the training area of Grafenwerk. This setting presents us with a huge medley of different topics to choose from. We can highlight the work of soldiers, report on happenings on the training center, discuss upcoming maneuvers, or cover visiting politicians. One man has told the story of Grafenwer training area through his English-German books. Aside from leading tours to the remotest areas, he serves as an envoy of history and cultural understanding. I believe people need to find out what the training area has to offer. The installation is a truly remarkable place, not just from a military standpoint, but also from a historical perspective. The development started with the Bavarian army, through the imperial era, the Wehrmacht times, ending with the takeover by the Americans. All that aside, there is much natural beauty found in the area. And so, one of my secondary functions led me to getting involved in public relations. I wrote a book around the time of the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the training area. Gravenver training area yesterday and today. Ultimately, this is important, and the Americans are welcomed here. The 2nd Cavalry Regiment is one of the Army's most storied units. Its Vilsack-based museum introduces guests to history ranging from the Seminole Wars in Florida to the latest campaigns in Afghanistan. The Regiment Museum really serves as the kind of the front door of the regiment, so it provides a one-stop location for local nationals to be able to come, learn about the history, be exposed to the regiment, um, and uh, just kind of see the regiment uh, during all of its different periods of its history. I think it provides a lot of folks that would not have, have the access to the, to the soldiers uh, a place to come do that, so we're able to show um, show, show the message through, uh, you know, through our artifacts, through our, our, our text panels, through our graphics, uh, to the public, even to the soldiers themselves, because I don't even think the soldiers, especially the lower enlisted and people like that, may not under fully understand the big picture, and I think we provide that big, big picture in many ways. Even with all of this engagement, hard work, and partnership, improvement is still possible. While comprehensive, the Army's communication strategy is always evolving. It's an army. An army does some things that are not necessarily for public consumption or to report. An army exists to wage war and sometimes do ugly things. The military doesn't want us reporting about those things, and perhaps our viewers don't want to hear about this either. But as a journalist, I would wish for more transparency and a more open dialogue about issues, especially more critical topics. Umgang damit, auch mit kritischen Themen. So we recently had this issue with drones. The main topic there was transparency. We wish that these words are followed by actions, that these solutions just weren't rhetoric. It would win back a lot of eroded trust. Sehr viel Vertrauen auch wieder zurück, zurückgewinnen. We can try as hard as we can to inform the German community but if they see something on international television or on their news, they aren't really going to believe us. They're going to believe them. This is ganz natürlich. Ich glaube, dass man halt durch eine I think that it's normal. And by providing objective information, these issues can be tackled. I'm confident that Americans will continue to have a variety of training opportunities as long as the flow of communications remains good and stays open. Uh, if there's some sort of incident or something that occurs and it's of importance to the surrounding community, I can pick up a phone and I already have that relationship developed where I can 
tell that mayor or that individual what has occurred and, and we already have that bond and that relationship to understand that we're being truthful with each other. While Bavaria is far from the centers of power in Berlin, it is apparent that it is these local relationships which really matter at the operational level. The varying ways in which the army is intertwined with its German leaders, neighbors, and employees always keeps people talking. Media outlets are also inclined to pick up messages the more relevant the Americans are to their audiences, while at the same time respecting their journalistic sensibilities. With a rapidly changing world and a desire for a continued international U.S. role, the case of the U.S. Army in Bavaria can be looked at as a model for government-mediated public diplomacy in the future. <laughs>